So look, thanks, thanks for the really warm welcome. I can tell you it's, uh, by the way, can you hear me back there? Yeah? Okay, good, good. It's great to be back here. As, as Corey was saying, you know, I had all my three kids, Alex, Alan, Sabrina, and Stephanie, that graduated here at the Grove. And uh, both my daughters were a student head of house. Who's from the Grove here at Grove? They loved it. So, yeah, good. So, it's career day today. So I seem to recall you know, being in your shoes one day, a long time ago. And that's the last time I'll say one time, a long time ago. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there's one thing you're very, very happy about listening to me today, is you're missing class to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember it being those days. So look, you heard the speech. You heard, you heard what, I've, what I've done. So to me, I basically tell you what I do today to start off. What do I do? Well, let me imagine yourself being a pilot of an airplane, commercial airplane, anywhere in the world. You're taking off from here, Peterborough. You're taking off from Toronto. You're taking off from Montreal, anywhere in the world. And you're flying to somewhere else, anywhere in the world. Think about sitting in that cockpit, looking at all those screens, looking at all those dials, look at those controls, and figuring out, how does it all work? How do I make this thing fly? How do I even know where I'm going? How do I navigate there? I'm going to Berlin. I'm going to wherever in the world. How do I get there? Think about all the people you have to talk to to be able to do that. Think about the maintenance people are preparing the airplane. The dispatchers are giving you your flight plan. Contra air traffic controls going across the ocean, crossing time zones, language barriers. How do you assimilate that? How, how much fuel do I need on the plane to get to where I want to go? How many passengers can I take? How do you train to do all that? That's what I do every single day. That's what we do. We train people to do just that every single day. And we are at CE, a great Canadian company. We are number one in the world at doing that. In fact, anywhere you fly, there are about 100,000 flights that, land, that go around the world every single day. A lot of you going back home soon, you'll be on one of them. Chances are, 75% chance, three quarters of chance, that those pilots flying that airplane, or those crew members in the back, have been trained in one of our flight simulators or to one of our training centers around the world. So what does that mean, simulators? What, what, is, what is it that we do? What is it that I love to do, run this organization? What does it mean, this flight simulator? Is because to train those pilots to fly that airplane safely around the world. What we do is we create, we engineer, build simulators. And what are they? Well, first of all, they're the best video game you have ever seen. <laughs> you know, the, uh, they have nothing. In fact, the visuals are from the same, company, same company that does Fortnite. But I can tell you, Xbox, PlayStation, they have nothing on us. In fact, our simulators, and I train in our simulators, so I know what, what, I'm, what I speak about. I have to go back into them every six months to prove that I can still fly the plane that took me here from Montreal to Peterborough today, OK? So we create not only the cockpit of that airplane as an exact replica, but we recreate the environment, the synthetic environment that makes it so real that the first flight I ever took, and everyone that flies a plane that we train, the first flight I took on the real airplane was with passengers in the back. Think about that. All of my training never left the ground, was done on a CA simulator. That's what I do. That's what leading a company, 13,000 employees around the world, headquartered right here in Canada, does. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> and that's why, you know, I've had, you know, as Corey said, and I, I, I love to, to, I was in awe when I listened to all the things that she says I did. But you know what? I, okay, I've had you know, a, a long and very successful career. It's been fun all the way. And, that, and to me, that is the secret to all of it, is to follow your passion. And when I think about it, I thought I'd tell you how I got, you know, from where I am today, from here to there, from sitting where you are to today. You know, as I said, I started, you know, when I, as, far as, as far as I can go back, I've always been nuts about airplanes and things that fly. When I was a kid, you know, I played, my toys were airplanes. You know, eventually I graduated when, joined the Air Cadets when I was 12, at 17, 
I learned to fly. I learned to fly, and I learned to fly there because, you know, we didn't have any money at home, so if I was going to fly, that was the only way because they would provide you a, a bursary. So I followed my dream there. And at that time, of course, I didn't have my driver's license, so, you know, I basically went back to study and got my driver's license after, a couple years after that. But I, I got to think, okay, what are my career choices? The obvious career choice at that time and I wanted to do was to become an airline pilot. But back then, you know, there was not a lot of opportunity. And that's something to think about, opportunity sometimes. There was not a lot of opportunities. There just wasn't a lot of jobs back then. So in the end of the day, I figured I'd do something else. So I think, well, what's something else? You know, follow your passion. My passion was airplanes. So what I do? Well, I thought, I learned about engineering. So how did I find out? Just, I'm going to this path that lead you down to, if somebody tells you there's a master plan somehow, there isn't. There certainly wasn't in my case, I can tell you that. How I learned about engineering was my girlfriend's sister's boyfriend <laughs> was going to engineering school. And in talking to him at, at, at home around the kitchen table at my girlfriend's house, he basically told me about engineering. He says, Mark, I think you'd like that. But the best thing about what he told me is that if I went into it, he'd drive me there every day. <laughs> and being a non-driver, that became a very, very important advantage. So that's how I wound up in engineering school. And I continued to follow the dream there because I knew that through engineering, you could continue your passion and work in aviation. So I eventually did that. And I started, and then I got a summer job. Summer jobs, internships. You can get them, do them, because by doing that, you're going to learn what you like. And chances are, sometimes basically, you know, what you thought you liked may not be actually what you like. So I got a summer job. I got a summer job at a company called Canada Air, which today is Bombardier Aerospace, designing, building airplanes. So during the summer, I was doing this job, and it wasn't a glamorous job, but except for the first time I got to fly in a real jet, for the very first time in my life. That, that was really exciting. But what I saw during there, during my summer, was there was engineers there that you know, were doing the same job for like 20 to 30 years, same job. They're highly specialized, highly motivated. But you know what, I can say, no, this is not for me. This is, I, I just could not see myself doing the same job for time and time again. So I really was starting to second guess my choice there in going to engineering school. But then I, I talked to someone. I talked to one of my professors. Oh, listen, talk to people. I talked to one of my professors, and then I asked him. I shared my you know, concerns about that. He said, no, no, no. He says, would you, what you like to do with your profile, let me give you some advice. And he gave me some advice. He basically led me on the path to another way of being an engineer, but not be specialized. So I started working in a department. When I started to work, I started to work in a department called aerodynamics. Where I learned how the airplane flies, and I engineered that. Then I was a mechanical engineer, so I went to something called flight controls. So I learned how the controls work, the landing gear works, the flaps work. Eventually, I wasn't an expert at any single job, because I hadn't worked 20 years there, but I knew enough about everything, about how an airplane works and how it was designed, that I eventually could be a leader of it all. Then I got uh, what's called the flight test program. We we're testing a new airplane, and I got to bring it all together. So eventually what happened is I got to lead a complete aircraft program, designing from day one right to the airplane flying. Then you know what I learned? Hey, I like this. I'm good at it. So what happens then? They give me another one. They give me another one after that. Then eventually, basically I wound up leading all the new aircraft programs at the company. But knowing me, I like to move. So then I said, what else can I do? Well, then I thought, well, how about building them? So I went into fabrication, learning how to you know, build the airplanes that we designed. So I did that, and I moved around the world. I went to, uh, to Tucson, Arizona, Wichita, Kansas, exciting destinations, Wichita, Kansas. 
Tucson, Arizona. That is actually better exciting. Toronto, back to Montreal. And really, to me, you know, it really was like living the dream because if you're in aviation, you put your, basically, you haul your skills on engineering, building an airplane, you see it fly for the first time. You know, you talk to the pilots after they land, after flying that very first time. It's, it, all, it brings it all together. And all through this, it, all through this whole career, that whole time, it leading today here you know, at CAE, I can tell you that, frankly, I've never worked a day in my life mm. because I work in something that I'm passionate about. And all through the career, everything I've done will have to do in some way, shape, or form with living the dream, living the passion I had. And that, that wasn't you know, a straightforward path. It wasn't linear. You know, I tried different things, tried different opportunities, and that's something else I would say. You know, look for opportunities. It wasn't always straight, and sometimes I took risks. I took my family, I moved them to different destinations like the ones I just talked about, uprooted them, uprooted kids from school. But you know what? All of this, all of this created experiences. Experiences that the one thing I would invite you to think about is you really, the experiences that we live makes us, you know, who we are, who we are. It's a summation of all that. So maybe perhaps to conclude and, and basically maybe entertain questions that anybody would have, you know, I would tell you that maybe this, again, the fatherly part of the speech here, brace yourself, follow your dream, follow your passion, do something that excites you. Because if you, if you do that, you'll do like me. You'll never work a day in your life because you'll enjoy it. It will be hard sometimes. If it isn't, it's no fun. It's no fun. And 40 hours a week, 30 hours a week, whatever it may be, you know, if you're, again, if every day you're creating something that nurtures your ambitions, you'll be happy. You'll be happy. Listen to people, as I said. I'm quite, you know, I'm sure that Listening to me today, you know, not sure how much you will retain, but you'll retain something. Listen, listen to people around the way. Listen to your professors. I did. Listen to your parents. Listen to your, your family. L listen and take heart. And I'm sure that years down the road, you'll remember, you'll, you'll be happy you listen to that advice and taken it. Finally, basically, surround yourself with great people. Surround yourself with great people because in the end of the day, well, we are social animals. We need that. And as you get, you move up in your career, make sure that the people around you, you know, first of all, you're working together. You're working as a team. You're working, you're listening to them. You're getting them to challenge you because we do our best when we get challenged. If it's easy again, you never get, you'll never get to the pinnacle of life that you can be. So to me, I'll just live, leave you on this, a, a career day. Take chances. Go for the opportunity. Swing for the fences. Try different things. And it's not going to linear. It's not linear. I'll repeat myself. If anybody had ever told me that I'd be where I am today, I would have never, ever believed them. Never. And I could tell you by almost every job I ever did. So with that, I'll, leave, I'll turn it over any questions that anybody might have.